Now we're going to change that and sing, Lord, I believe. Now listen. It's between you, Mother, and God. Listen, Dad. It's between you and God. Young woman, it's between you and God. Now we're going to sing, Lord, I believe. Some of us are going to get our faith back tonight. We left it at Mother's knee way back there about 40 years ago, but we're going to get it back tonight. Lord, I believe. Will you sing it now, Lord? I be All right, and instead of waiting for tomorrow to get our blessing, let's have it tonight. Now I believe. Let's slip up our hand as we sing it. Come on. Now I believe, now I believe. by his great vicarious suffering at Calvary. May their hearts be wooed to him who died in our place, the innocent for the guilty. Also may hundreds of people who are sick and afflicted and distressed and perplexed. And may these evil things that's come upon them, Satan has done, may God this week remove all those evil things from the people and may they go home well and serve the Lord. I trust that you will all be very much in prayer this week. This is our first night. And some of know about this meeting tonight out here. I guess Brother Baxter feels the same way that... And Billy Paul, my boy... Reminds me a lot of being in Africa. We had, many times we'd have to go to race courses and so forth and set in places, only the crowds. <laughs> in Africa, they come by the tens of thousands and thousands and thousands and they pile them on top of one another and everything else to get to get out to the services. They're very, they don't hear the gospel, and especially the gospel of deliverance. The missionaries is one of there and told them the psychic side of the gospel, just mentally believe the word, and so forth. But when this, the message come that God had come on the scene for deliverance, I tell you, we Americans has got our big concrete troughs laying out to run all the blessings off the people, but not in Africa. They got their hands up waiting for God, and there's where the blessings fall. The rains are falling. If the people just ready to receive it. The Holy Spirit come 2,000 years ago, still here tonight. He's just the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
<clears throat> now, each night we try not to keep you too long, and so that you can come back the next night. We have up, if the Lord willing, until the 10th of this month. Invite your pastors, no matter what, what phase of the gospel they preach, if they do not believe in, in the supernatural of God, well, of course, you bring them out anyhow. We're happy to have anybody, no matter who it is. Come out, especially bring the sick and the needy and the sinners. That's who we're looking for. We're looking to get somebody closer to God. That's our motive of being here. No other motive at all. If it wasn't for that, I'd be home tonight. If I didn't think that there'd be some sinners saved or some poor, sick, suffering helped doing these meetings, I'd be at home. But I feel that God will help us. And it will if, if you'll pray. Now let every one of your homes become a prayer room. Just start praying everywhere. I understand there's a group of churches that are supposed to be cooperating in this meeting, some 30-some-odd churches. They must have let down somewhere. But for according to the size of the crowd tonight. But if they did, God will not let us down if we'll just keep believing. And let us take heart. Let's be strong in faith. We must have these trials and testings and times to prove our faith. Every son that cometh to God must first be tried, chastened of God. So you come and pray. I, I want to read some of the Scripture. Mr. Baxter is the speaker. But if I don't read some of God's Word at night, I feel like I've, I've kind of let down somewhere. I feel like I've failed in some way. For after all, anything that I'd say could fail because I'm a man. But what God says will never fail. It's His Word. It cannot fail. And therefore, I like to read a little Scripture each night. And tonight, I want to read a portion of Scripture found in St. John, the first chapter. To you who many of times in the revivals, they like to mark the Scripture. We begin about the 44th verse and read a portion of the Scripture. And if I say I'm not going to preach, I'm just going to talk to you a few moments. And I'd say this, seeking after Jesus. In the 44th verse we read this, is the early beginning of Christ's ministry here on earth. Now Philip was of Bethesda, a city of Andrew and Peter. Philip find us Nathaniel and said unto him, We found him who Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Then Nathaniel said unto him, Can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, and he said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Now, if I call it a text, a very familiar place in the Scripture found in Hebrews 13.8. Most all full gospel people know what this says. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, in the 8th verse, reads like this. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to Thee tonight in the lovely name of Thy only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We thank Thee over again, Father, that Thou didst ever see fit one day to save us from a life of sin and call us. For we know that we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. And God, in His election and mercy, called us to Himself 
For it is written by Je Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father draws him. Then it was you, Lord, who began to draw. And we came, and he said, He that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. And we thank thee that thou hast received us as thy children. And we're unworthy of this name tonight and this title. But we know that thou hast given it to us by grace, and we are so thankful for it. And now, Father, we pray tonight that you'll help us to enjoy our heavenly privileges that the Holy Spirit has brought to us. And may this scripture... That's written here, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. May it be confirmed tonight before our very eyes. But sinners being saved, sick being healed, and the same Jesus that walked on the seas and stilled the waters, the same one that brought Lazarus up from the dead, may he walk into our presence tonight here. May the great angel of God that led the children of Israel through the wilderness, may he come near. Bless the people. For Father, we wait on the shepherd of the flock tonight, praying that he'll grant this, knowing that one time we being aliens from God, but now he's brought us nigh unto him by the offering of his blood. Grant these blessings. May everyone receive faith and healings and blessings tonight. For we ask that in Jesus' name, thy Son, amen. I want to cut my sh short my talk. <clears throat> but I would like to ask you something. In the very beginning of this meeting, let's think of what is divine healing. I want you to give me your undivided attention. And this is just not something, it's some mythical something that somebody has thought up. It's the Word of God. Now, all men can't receive it. The Bible said that they'd be blind and they just, they just have to be. The Bible said that they were foreordained to this condemnation. They just can't believe it. They've got nothing in there to believe with. So they, just like a grain of corn, if it isn't germatized, it'll never raise up no matter how much fertilizer you put on it. It has no life to raise by. But if it's got life, you can just put it in any kind of ground, it'll come forth. Now, a man that's born to the Spirit of God, is made, a man then becomes in the image of God inwardly. God, when he made this world, he just spoke the Word. He had nothing else to do, nothing else to make it out of. He just spoke it into existence. The world was made by the Word of God. God spoke the words to let there be, and it began to materialize. And the very ground that you set over tonight is the Word of God materialized. Did you know that? God just said, let there be, and it was. Yes, amen. He believed his own word. Yes. Then he's almighty God. And if he's almighty God, he can do all things. Yes, and if he cannot do all things, he isn't almighty God. Yes. And if the scripture tells us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, Mr. Baxter, in the afternoon services... And the evening service is to explain, teaches the Word, divine healing from the Word, proving it, setting it in order, and showing it. It's been tried around the world. Still, God's provided way for mankind. And now tonight, I want to ask you something. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever... And if we were speaking of something else, that there, an electricity or lights is the same today as it was, uh, say, in the Andalusian world, and we had a description of what the lights looked like there, what electricity was, we'd have to look at that same description tonight. If you went to find one of your relatives in a crowd of people, you'd have to have a description, something about him that would make you know who he was. Now, I want to say this in behalf of many probably... People tonight, we wouldn't understand divine healing or our critics of it. We do not claim to be divine healers now. There's, there is a lot of fanaticism hooked up with divine healing. There's a lot of fanaticism hooked up with every phase of anything you want to go at. Yes, amen. In your churches, 
There's people that's real fanatics, religious fanatics. But that don't mean that God isn't real. That doesn't mean that there isn't a real true Christian. It only de- indicates that there is a real one. If you had a bogus dollar, it'd have to be a real sure fact that there was a real dollar that dollar was made off of. Is that right? If it isn't, the bogus dollar would be the real dollar. The counterfeit. But then there is a counterfeit. It only speaks of a real one. And when you see somebody acting like or pretending to be a Christian, it only means there is a real genuine Christian somewhere. When you see somebody in a practice of divine healing made in some fanatical way, it only speaks that there's a real article somewhere it's coming from. That's right. A pro and con. Negative and positive. True and false in all things. I want to ask you something. If we were going to look for Jesus of Nazareth tonight, I want to ask this audience, do you believe that the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Do you believe that? Well, then, if he rose from the dead, he's among man tonight, as he promised he'd be. He said, a little while, and the world sees me no more. Yet you shall see me. Who is he talking Well, who's you? Ye is a believer, the church. How Just that group of people know. You shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Is that right? All scriptures dovetail together. That's Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's watch the type of person he was. Let's look at his character. Watch his ministry. And as he worked then, he works now. As he was then, he is now and will be forever. And just what he did in them days, he'll do it today. He'll be just the same forever. He's the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. The same type of character. A man that professes to be a Christian must have a Christ-like nature. If it isn't, there's another nature there which it isn't Christ-like. If you had the nature of a, a killer, if I told you I had the spirit of John Dillinger, some famous outlaw, you'd expect me to have guns, and you'd be dangerous to be sitting around here. Where was that? Because I'd be a murderer. If I told you I had the, the spirit of some famous mechanic, you'd expect me to know what was wrong with your car if I looked at it. If I told you the Spirit of Christ was in me, I must act like Jesus. You must act like Jesus. Your character and conduct must be molded like that. And the Holy Spirit molds that conduct when it comes into you, when you're really born again of the Spirit of God. What we need tonight is that type of church. A church when Jesus, whatever the Father showed him, he believed it. It had to be what the Father's Word was. He used the Father's Word to defeat Satan without any using his power. I want you to notice how simple this is. When Jesus was here on earth, he was Emmanuel. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. God was manifested in the flesh in Jesus Christ, and he was the Emmanuel. And when he walked along here on earth, he had powers. What the Father was, he had manifested himself in the Son. But when he met Satan, he never used any of his power. He used the Father's word. Satan said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones. I won't see you perform a miracle. Command these stones to be made bread. Jesus never used his power to defeat Satan. He said, It is written, the Father's word. Psalm, also in Deuteronomy, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. See how reverent he was to the word? It is written. Satan taking him up on the temple and whitewashed the scriptures for him. He said, and it is written, again. He taking him up on the mountain, showed him all the kingdoms. Jesus said, it is written. And he defeated the devil by the word of God. Never used any power at all. Bringing every divine blessing down in the, to the reach of the humblest and weakest of Christians. As long as you believe that that's the word of God and say it's written, it'll defeat Satan anywhere, anytime, on any condition. The word of God. It certainly will. Amen. Dare to put it to prom- put his promise. And now listen to this closely. Any divine promise of God, the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of God will bring it to pass. If you can look at it right and believe it in that way that it's written, say, God, it's your word, and take the right mental attitude towards that divine promise, it'll bring it to pass. Because there's no defeat. Faith cannot be defeated. There's no defeat to faith. Watch the ministry of our Lord. 
He did not claim to be a great person. Born and come by the way of a stable door and went out the way of capital punishment. Owned about one garment in his lifetime. Never had a place to lay his head. Never went very far. Traveled on humbly. Lived among the peasants. Spoke a very common language. He was no great person. Or claimed not to be. The Bible said he took on himself no reputation. Made himself no reputation. The man that made a false leg got a reputation for doing it. But the man that made the real leg when he was here didn't get no reputation. The man that made the real teeth, he didn't get may take himself no reputation, but the man that made false teeth got a reputation. The man that made an artificial eye made himself a name by doing it. But the man that made the real eye took on himself no reputation. But he was Emmanuel. He walked humbly. He lived among the poor. The Bible said the common people heard him gladly. He was rejected by the fundamentals of that day. Let me repeat that. He was rejected by the fundamentals of that day. Correctly. The very holiest and religious teachers failed to see him because their eyes were blinded. Them spirits never die. They live on. The peasants, when they're in the temple arguing how, what kind of buttons they must use on their coats, there were some magis coming across the country looking at a star. They had observatories in them days, like we have today. They even kept time. Every city wall had a tower. They kept time by the stars, but no other man, nobody else saw it. You know why? They wasn't looking for it. And that's the reason they say, I didn't see nothing happen. They didn't come looking for it. That's the reason people, they say, I don't see nothing divine healing. There's nothing to it. You don't look for it. You don't believe it. A fellow said not long ago, said, Brother Branham, I wouldn't believe it no matter. I said, it wasn't for unbelievers. It was for believers. See? It's just those who believe. That's all it was sent for. But when he was here on earth, he didn't have much education, but he, was a, he had the power of God that when he was only 12 years old, he confounded the, the wisdom of the priest. God was with him. That's what makes the difference. God being with you. And I see him in the beginning of his ministry. Satan tempted him. But after his at temptation of 40 days, he came out. Now, let's watch this character now. That's who we're looking for. Got a picture of what he is now? Look at him, what he is. Now, just in your mind, draw a mental picture of what he is. And what he was then, that's what he is tonight. And what he always will be. And now, I want you to notice another thing. He's just beginning to come famous. He was healing a few sick people and so forth. His fame began to spread out as a man by the name of Philip got converted. And as soon as he got converted, it showed he really got converted. He found some good news and he wanted to tell his friend. Anybody that always finds good news wants to tell their friend. Yes, amen. So as soon as he was converted, he went and found Nathaniel, a buddy of his. He said, come find, see who I found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And this man was a righteous man from the bottom of his heart. He was a truthful man. He said, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth, a very wicked little city? And he said, just come and see. Now, let's get just a little drama here as you get the picture. Now, here we come to our text tonight. Here's a lowly carpenter's son with a black name behind him as an illegitimate child, but standing here performing things of God. And here comes a man walking up to him. Nathaniel come walking up. And when Jesus looked and saw his, his convert, Philip, bringing up Nathaniel, here to Nathaniel and said, Behold an Israelite, indeed in whom there is no guile. If I'd repeat that tonight, I'd say a Christian, a believer, a truthful man. What astonished the Israelite? He said, When did you know me, Rabbi, or Reverend, Master, whatever, teacher? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Now, the doctors, lawyers, the religious people of that day said, he's Beelzebub. He's the best fortune teller in the world. But the devil said, that's the Son of God. We know who you are, the Holy One of Israel. The devil knew more about it than they did in that case. He said, we know who you are. But every time they said he's a... He's a horrible person. 
But the devil's always confessed him to be the Son of God. We know who you are, the Holy One of God. Why comest thou to torment us before our time comes? And the minister said, he's Beelzebub. He's the chief of all the witches and devils. Now, look one time he's seen a woman coming. He sent his disciples away. And he found a woman coming from a well or to a well to get some water. St. John, the fourth chapter. And he seen this woman coming, and she was a Samaritan. There's a well there near Samaria. Samaria. So he, they all came to get water. Maybe it's about noontime. They'd gone away to get something to eat. Maybe the woman, she was a prostitute. Maybe just because she'd been out all night and just got up at that time, or I don't know what it was. She'd come at that time of day, but Jesus knew she was coming. And he said, bring me a drink. And she said, it's not customary for Jews to ask Samaritans such for we have no dealing. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. I wonder what he was doing. Now, let's watch. He's talking face to face with the woman. He's contacting her spirit. See? He said, well, if you knew who you were speaking to, you'd ask me. She said, the well's deep, and you have nothing to draw. He said, but the waters that I give is living waters that come up from the inside. Said, well, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. You say in Jerusalem. The conversation went on until Jesus found just what she was, what her trouble was. He went right straight to her trouble. He said, "Go get your husband." She said, "I have none." He said, "You said, well, you have five. And she said, "Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet." And she went into the city saying, "Come see a man who told me all the things I ever done." He never told her all she ever done. He told her just one thing she done. But if God could reveal that to him, he could reveal all things to him. Is that right? He said, come see a man that told me everything i ever ever done. Isn't this the very Christ? Look at him again, talking about miracles. You believe he was full of compassion, full of love? I want to give you a little dark picture, and I want you to bear with me just a moment before we start praying for the sake. Let's take St. John 5 now. We're in 1, 4, now let's take 5. There's a sheep gate, a pool called Bethesda in the Hebrew tongue. Great multitudes of impotent folk laid there. Lame, I watched while they was, lame, halt, blind, withered. Is that right? Any Bible readers knows that's true? Now look at the condition. Lame, halt, blind, withered. Waiting for the moving of the water, for an angel came down at a certain season, trouble the water. Now look. Jesus came right down through by this pool. Let's give a little drama. Here's an old man standing there blind saying, Somebody please help me to pool. Any historian knows that they even stabbed one another with knives trying to beat to the pool the first time the angel troubled the water. For whoever getting in had faith got healed. And then the angel went away just one, one at a time, maybe every month or two. But they've waited for years. We can't wait for an hour. Where hundreds are healed. How times has changed. How people's faith has changed. How their desires has changed. You've got to go right quick and there's nothing to it. See? Oh, what a pity the world. But watch Jesus passing through a crowd of lame people that would make this little audience tonight would be probably 30 or 40 times what we got laying here or more. If I understand right, it takes 2,000 to make a multitude. And there were multitudes, plural. And Jesus come right by those little blind children, crippled, lame, halt, twisted, the very Emmanuel, the very God of heaven, and veiled in human flesh, walking among those people and failed to touch a one of them or heal a one. Then he was full of compassion. Huh? Scripture said he was full of compassion. He was full of love. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Then why not have compassion on that multitude of lame, halt, blind, and withered? That's where your infidel takes you. But here's where you don't understand. See, passing by there. And he went to a man that laid on a pallet. Maybe, let's say he had all oh, some kind of trouble, maybe sugar diabetes or prostate something. If he was retarded, he had 38 years. But Jesus knew he was laying there. And he went over and said, Will thou be made well? And leaving them poor, crippled, blind people's 
halt withered mothers of waterhead babies and little blind children and everything, walked right by every one of them and walked over there to the pool. Walked right by the pool, rather, and walked over to this man laying on a pallet. Could you imagine Jesus doing that? The Bible said he did it. Now Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're only looking at one side. But he walked by them and walked over to this man laying on a pallet, for the Bible said he knew that this man had been in this condition these 38 years. He healed that one man and walked away and left that whole multitude of people laying there. That's the Scripture. Read it. St. John 5. Now the Jews questioned him. I want you to read the whole chapter tomorrow, St. John 5. When the Jews was questioned concerning the man with his bed on the Sabbath day, look, uh, St. John, let's take the 19th verse now, the same chapter, St. John 5, 19. The Jews was questioning him. Now look what Jesus said. The, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. For whatsoever things the Father doeth, that doeth the Son likewise. And he'll show you greater than this that you might marvel. The Father worketh, and I worketh hitherto. Watch, audience. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus didn't claim to be a divine healer. He claimed to be God's Son, and that's what he was, and said he could do nothing until the Father showed him what to do. In a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. Now watch. The things that I do, said Jesus, St. John 12, St. John 14, 12. The things that I do shall you also. And greater in this, for I go to my Father. Is that true? If you abide me in my word and you ask what you may, and it'll be given. That's either right or wrong. It's right. Now, if you see why he didn't heal everybody, he did not do nothing, he said with his own words, until God showed him a vision of what was taking place, then he went and done it. No flesh can glory before God. God is all in and all. He's over all. And Jesus said that he would come back and be with us, and he resurrected from the dead, lives among man tonight, working in his church, and the real, true, believing church sees Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, if Jesus Christ was here on earth tonight in a physical body like I am, he is in the form of the Holy Spirit. God took his body and set it on the right, his right hand and, and glory on the throne and sent the Spirit back as a covenant to the people. And we're sealed by that Holy Spirit baptism which gives us a touch of God's life in us. Zoe, the life of God. In us now we become sons of God. That's what makes you believe. No matter what, that's God's Word. I believe it. We believe it. Now, if Jesus is standing here wearing my suit tonight, my shoes, He couldn't heal a person here until God would show him to do it. He said, The Son doeth nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. You believe he told the truth? He did. Now watch watch the place. Here come two blind men one time coming by. In the street, he just went on. He hadn't seen no vision of them. He went on in the house, and they brought the blind man to him. He turned around and touched her eyes and said, According to your faith be it unto you. Your faith. The woman touched the hem of his garment. He turned around and said, Thy faith has saved thee. Not his faith, her faith. Now let's bring it to this. If Jesus appears then in our midst here to prove his same powers, uh, he perceived and knowed the thoughts of the people that was around him. Is that right? Amen. Knowing their thoughts. He knew where some mules was tied one time. He knew where a fish had a coin in his mouth. See? But only what the Father told him, that's what he did. He did nothing else. They put a rag around his face. They knew he was a prophet. They put a rag around his head one time and hit him on the head with reeds and said, Now if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. He didn't clown for people. He just let them alone. Amen. They'd be blind leading the blind once they'd fall in the ditch. He doesn't clown yet tonight. He doesn't put on stage shows. Jesus 
is not an entertainer. He's a savior and a healer. And he's with his people. He's here in the church tonight. Mr. Baxter has told you concerning a divine gift that was sent from heaven. And humbly, I uh, say this, that from my babyhood that God sent me to pray for the sick people. He told me that. Mr. Baxter's quoted the story to you, no doubt. He usually does on the first night. Now, if Jesus is here tonight with us, and if you have respect to him and the Father God, and will ask God, God can reveal himself down here to you tonight just as he could through his, his church here as he could in the days gone by. He sent his gifts into the church. Many different gifts he puts into his church. One of them is he could speak with the unknown tongue and let somebody interpret it, and it would be directly to somebody and would be the truth. And the Bible said, but if you all speak with tongues and there be no interpreter, you sound like a bunch of uh, barbarians or something. But he said, if one will prophesy and reveal the secrets of the heart, then won't they all fall down and say, God is with you? Well, then that same spirit was in the Corinthian church, even is in the church tonight. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he'd be that type of person. Now, I want to ask you something. I do not know that he will. I'm way past my time. I do not know that he will. And later on in the meetings, much can be said. You want to attend every night. But tonight I want to ask this little audience, has any of you ever been in the meetings before, some of my meetings? Let's see your hand. Well, that's fine. You understand what I'm talking about. To you that has not, if Jesus will appear here on the scene in a supernatural form and will speak and do the same works that he did when he was here on earth, you don't have any way at all of doubting. You should believe with all your heart and accept his written word. For he died for you, for your sins at Calvary. And if you're a sinner, give your life to him. And by his stripes, you were healed 1,900 years ago. Just accept your healing and go about your way rejoicing. Most of us in here are past the age of 25 or 30, the best of life. We've got to answer in our to judgment. Let's do something for God while it's day. Let's be up. Don't be a spineless person. If God is true, let's seal our testimony if it takes our blood to seal it. God be God serving. If He isn't, leave Him alone. If His Word isn't true that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then the Bible is an error. If Jesus said that I'll be with you even to the end of the world, if he ain't here to manifest himself as he did then, it's an error. But it isn't an error. It's the truth. God is sure to meet the challenge of your faith. May the Lord bless you while we bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, here we are tonight way up here in Indiana. Around the world, across the nations, and the deep seas, and into the jungles, and into the deserts, and the byways and highways, kings' palaces, down to the little humblest of homes, thou hast visit with great power. And now I pray thee, God, at the beginning of this service, at this place here, we are very thankful to have the roof over our head tonight. And we pray that you'll bless those who have made it possible. And now, Lord, if this has been used for something different, may these place, the grounds, the stadium here be sanctified. May the angels of God take their positions at every place. May every evil power be driven back. May the Holy Spirit have the right of way. O oh, eternal God, send the legions. Drive back all fear, doubting. And may this turn to be a great, powerful meeting. The Holy Spirit speaking to hearts, thousands being saved and many healed, miracles, signs, and wonders. May people be in the streets tomorrow testifying of the glory of God. May there break an old-fashioned revival that will sweep the entire country through here. 
bring thousands to Christ before the coming. Grant it, Lord. Hear us now, and your humble servant unworthy, neither counted ourselves worthy to stand here before this fine purchase of your blood, these lovely people. But thou has ordained that we should do so, so, Father, we're here in your name. I pray tonight that you'll send the angel of God, the Holy Spirit, and may great signs and wonders be wrought that will shake the country. And these ministers and Christians who stood and preached and talked about it for years and years and have paved the way, may their churches grow now. May it break out. May many be saved, Father. And I'll confirm the word that they preached through thy Spirit, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. My Christian friends, I want to say this just before. Many times, many phenomenal things happen. As Brother Baxter has explained to you, I'm just your brother, just a man. But when things are taking place, let everyone hold their peace. I don't know what will take place. I want everyone to be just as reverent as you can. If you're a critic, I wouldn't sit near because remember, friends, if this be, if you want to place it that way, the Spirit of God and unclean spirits go out of people, and you're a critic, you're subject to it. And be it assured to you that I'm not responsible for criticism, for any unbelief, for a demon is just as helpless as he can be. This week we're going to preach on demonology and so forth, let you know that it's all demon powers. But now when he comes out of a person, he tries to find another place to go. Anyone knows the Bible knows that's true. Read Acts 19 and find out. And you'll see Jesus said when the unclean spirit also, when he's gone out of people, he walks in dry places and returns. I want you to have faith. I want you to sit quiet. I want you to believe. I want you to pray for me. May the Lord bless you. Now, Brother Baxter, you've told them how we give out our prayer cards and the systems we have so that everybody can have a chance every day. And prayer cards don't mean one thing. Any persons out there tonight that hasn't got prayer cards will look this way and believe and have faith in God, I'll assure you, God will answer your faith. That's right. You can just challenge and lay aside all your superstitions and look there and say, Father, I believe it with all my heart. And God will grant it. Now, not to be, I just, he told me, if you get the people to believe you and be sincere when you pray, I want you to do that. Now, whether he'll do one that's up to our Heavenly Father, I do not know. But where we'll have to stand the sick, brother, around down in this way? Well, we can't take too many of them at one time. What, you start getting from one? The blind man. He took him by the hand out of the multitude and led him outside the city. And heal him. Is that right? Look at Peter when Darkus is dead. The widows are weeping in carrying on. He put them everyone out of the house. Is that right? Then went over and knelt down and prayed. Look at Elijah when he went to raise the dead baby. See? It's something of being shut away with God. Now, of course, out in there, there's spirit of all kinds to combat. But when nothing, is, when it's around you and everywhere, then it's, it's so much different. Now, if Jesus Christ will appear here on the scene tonight, proving that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many of you will accept it and it's the truth and will go tell others and pray? And uh, God bless you. That's 100% all over the building. Thank you. God bless you and may the Lord Jesus, who's present now, who could take our lives and hold us in our hand, may He come and grant that to you tonight. That privilege is my sincere prayer. All right. Is there a piano player somewhere? Now, I want you to believe tonight, friends, all with one accord. And if you will, my sister, say, uh, play softly, only believe, if you will, or abide with me, something like that. How many believe that the Spirit of God comes in music? Remember when Elisha got all stewed up one time? And 
He said, if it wasn't, I respected the presence of Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at you. Is that right? We said, nevertheless, bring me a minstrel. And the music began to play. Now, you that don't believe in music in the church, what about that? And the Spirit of the Lord come up on the prophet when the music was playing. I'd be reverent. Have faith. I'm going to get my mic out here just so... The reason I set this positionally, you probably wouldn't understand, but sometimes it becomes subconscious to me. I can hardly tell where I'm at. How many understands what vision does to you? Well, Daniel saw one vision and it troubled him for many days. This is a divine gift. To heal anyone, I couldn't do it. It's not for me. Jesus has already done that. Save you, I couldn't do it. No one else could. Christ has already done it. You just accept it. But now as his prophet, that's different. That's different. That's a gift. All right, is this your first question? Uh, in the audience, the people, as far as I know, every one of you is strangers to me, except I see Mr. and Mrs. Roberson from my church, and sitting next to them is, is Mr. and Mrs. Wood. My wife's somewhere in the building. I've seen Brother Ryan sitting over here from Dwarjack, Michigan. And outside of that, I don't, do not know one person. I've seen this little fellow here with a black coat on. I, Somewhere, I can't call his name. That's the only ones that I know of. The only ones that I know of. Now, you be reverent. And now, keep your mind on Christ. Keep believing. And you out there in the audience now, just be reverent. Now, remember, tomorrow give a testimony. I think I've got everything in order now to where what takes place. You'll know for tomorrow. Be reverent. Give God praise. I do see a young man sitting back here from, from my church down there also. This young fellow sitting right here. Probably he's at the platform in a few minutes. I wouldn't know him. All right, now, I want to talk to the lady. Now, if something, if anything takes place while I'm talking, don't... Don't interrupt them. If you want to thank God, then do it afterwards if someone gets healed. Now, here stands a lady before me, a stranger to me. But God knows the lady. I don't. But God does. He knows all about her. Now, if that woman, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he'll know just what's wrong with this woman. And he'll know just the same as he knew what was wrong with that woman at the well. Is that right? He'll know just exactly what Philip was talking about. When he, uh, what Nathaniel, where the, Philip found Nathaniel. Then if the Holy Spirit is here tonight and would reveal to this lady the same, ma same way that he did to those people back there, would that make... You'd know there'd be some supernatural power... So wouldn't that make Jesus Christ the same yesterday, day, and forever? Sure would. All right, lady. I want to talk to you just a minute. Being the first patient, it's always just a little hard. And I get this microphone because sometimes I don't know how loud I'm talking. But I just want to talk to you and you just answer my questions. And you know what? It's a, what I'm trying to do. You're, you are a woman. I'm a man. We're, and I believe that you're a Christian because you have a very welcome to your, to your spirit. Now... You, you know there's nothing I could do to help you. I'm, I'm just a man, just your brother. But now, if I have told the truth, and God knows whether I have or not, giving praise and glory to who it belongs to, Jesus Christ, then I claim that the Bible is right, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then, if he had talked to that woman at the well of Samaria... Well, he's the same Jesus tonight, and he uses our body for different things. Do you believe that? You do. All right. Now, that won't hurt you, see. That's your, in the presence of something, you, you realize that then, see. That's just his presence, see. I share. 
Do you believe me to be his servant? You do, with all your heart. You are... Beg your pardon. Yes. Thank you. You're, you're not from around this country. You've come here. You've, uh, you've got what you're scared is cancer. Is that right? Mm-hmm. 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 You've, uh, you've been prayed for somewhere before. Is that right? And it wasn't a cancer located in the throat? Is that right? And you've been... I, God bless you, lady. Yeah, yes, sir. You've been spitting up little things and putting them in some kind of a... Something to hold, haven't you been? Isn't that right? Alcohol, to, to keep it for a testimony. Is that true? Well, God bless you. That's all you have to do. Keep doing it. You'll get well. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless the woman abundantly. May she go home now and be completely whole. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go, don't fear a bit. You've got, you got it in your body. Well, thanks be to God. A reverend, and everyone believe now with all your heart. All right. How do you do, sister? Do you believe? We're strangers, are we? We're perfect strangers. I do not know you. But if there would be anything in your life and us strangers, it'd have to come from some supernatural resource. Isn't that right? You're aware that you're standing near something, not more than your brother here. That's right. But that's his presence. Did you ever see that picture they took of him and got it? In the, if you've seen it, well, that's um, well, that's what it, you're aware. It's close now. Do you believe me to be his prophet? You do. You're very upset, aren't you? Yeah. You was at a doctor recently with an X-ray picture. Isn't that right? Afraid of cancer, aren't you? No, but it's down in the bowels. Is that right? It's a tumor. They said tumor. You're afraid of cancer. But it's in the bowels. Isn't that right? Is that true? Is that the truth? Raise your hand if that's the truth. You know, lady, I've never seen you in my life. Is that, that wasn't me talking. You might have heard my voice. That was him talking. Well, then, if he's that close to you now, won't you accept him as your healer? Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal this woman and may she go from here and be made well. May her great faith heal her, Lord. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go. May he bless you abundantly. Make you Do you now believe? You shall see greater than this. You shall see the glory of God if you'll only have faith and believe. God knows all things. Now to you that's back in the audience, just look this way and believe God with all your heart. See if God won't make you well. You believe in two, sister? Or just keep believing he come near you. I have faith. How do you do, sir? Mm-hmm. The Lord bless you, sir. Seems like I've seen you somewhere. I've met you. Oh, I, I believe I shook hands with you somewhere. Oh, going out of the building here today, was it? Or you're standing right there. Was that right? I thought I'd seen your face or something somewhere. You've been at my tabernacle. Huh. Well, um, but I don't know what's wrong with you. Only God would know that, as far as I know. Now, do you believe that the things that that are taking place comes from God? I want you to look at me and throughout everything. Um, you believe it comes from God? I believe it comes from God. That's right. Certainly. Has to, doesn't it? You know what? I couldn't do that. No other man. But I believe he's working for you. Thank you, brother. Then, see, it's not what I say that for, my brother. Is not to get people like Peter and John when they passed through the gate called Beautiful. They said, look on us. See, in other words, look up, give heed, listen to what I'm saying. See, 
And he, as I quoted that scripture a few moments ago about Elijah, he said, you remember the story in the Bible where uh, Jehoshaphat and the king of, and made alliance together, unbelievers, and went out and they got in trouble. And Elijah said, if it wasn't that I respected the presence of Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at you. See? But then he respected that. Then he looked to see what God would tell him. And he went in and saw a vision, come back and told him. He said, go dig ditches and so forth. You know the story, if you read the Scripture. Now, the same God that was with Elijah is here tonight. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Now, you are I'm talking to you just like the... He talked to the woman at the well. I'm trying to contact your spirit. You don't think I'd be reading your mind? No, no sir. I'm no, not. Sir. I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to help you. You're a complete breakdown. Everything's wrong with you. Isn't that right? Haven't you been operated on several times? Is that right? Five or six times at least, I'd say. I've been operated on uh, three times. And having, having just some kind of apostate trouble, it, isn't that right? That's right. You've been in a prayer line before. That's right. Outside of mine, too. And the guy was real Sandy looking hair or something, kind of short face. I'd say it was Mr. Allen. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Was those things true? They're true. They are true. 100%. 100% true. All right. Now, sir, then there's something here that knows that, isn't it? There's something revealing that to me. Uh, right. If you'd accept that as Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and accept Him as your healer, you can get well. Do you believe it? I believe it, yes, sir. All right, then, bow your head. Almighty God, who sent your Son, our Lord, to this earth, the last words He said as He left the earth, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Lord, help thou our unbelief. And heal this man tonight. May he go away from here and his nerves settle down. His blood pressure drop. May he go home and get well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, brother. brother I go I reach you. I didn't get sick. Oh, here, that's all right. Stick it in the offering here. Give it to Mr. Patrick. Yeah, I need to take it out. God bless you. Thank you. Just a thing. What do you think about that? You believe? You believe God's here to do it? You, you're sick too, aren't you? You're in need too, aren't you? Suffering with a high blood pressure. Isn't that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. Why don't you accept your healing then? How do I know what's wrong with you sitting there? That man had high blood pressure too. When it left him, it left you. So now you're healed. Well, God bless you. you go. <clears throat> Have faith in God. If you believe this, you shall see great things. Only have faith in God. How do you do, lady? Do you believe you are Christian? If the Holy Spirit, if Jesus Christ will show to His unworthy servant just what's wrong with you, and He'd go right straight and tell you what's wrong with you, like He did the woman at the well, would you accept Him as your healer? Are we strangers? You and I? You saw me before. Is that right? But anything in your life, I would know nothing about it, would I? I don't know nothing about you in that way. Nothing about it. You just saw me. That was awesome. Now, if he'll tell me what's wrong with you, you accept your healing. May he grant it. That's right. God bless you. Man, that you have re received it like that, God has showed. You have heart trouble. Is that right? Now, what would you say you would do? 
accept your healing and go and get well. If you, listen, if God knows what was in your life, will He know what will be in your life? If you go in here happily believing that and testifying to the same, the heart trouble will leave you. If you know what was and you know that's true, surely He knows what will be. I go do just as I tell you, you'll get well. The Lord God bless you, my sister, and make you completely whole. Amen. All right. How do you do, sir? Do you believe with all your heart? You do. We're strangers, are we, sir? You just saw me. See, in a small audience where the people, it's many times my friends that come in, I usually ask that, you see. When the anointing just doesn't drop in like it should tonight, just in some way, you see. Of course, it's first, and you're here in a strange place. You understand, I just talk to you a little while. But I am, a, as far as knowing you and your life, I, I that way. Of course, you're wearing glasses. I won't mention that, if that's, that's what your trouble is. No, sir. Standing between you and I, I see you moving away from the table. you got stomach trouble. Is that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. Now, just so that you might know that it's true, stand still just a moment. I hear another spirit scream from up in the audience there somewhere. There's a lady sitting right up there that's got stomach trouble, right on that back row, right straight ahead of me there, way up the back. Stand up, lady. I see the, that light hang over you. Yes, sir. You have a, yours is a, some kind of a, but it's a very strange case. I see you have to add acid. You're, you have an acid deficiency. Is that right in your stomach? Is that right? If it's right, wave your hand back and forth this way. All right? Both of you is healed. Go home and eat what you want to. God bless you. Have faith in God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now your spirit's coming down, anointing you now. Your faith is increasing. That gives me more liberty. Do you believe, lady? We are strangers, you and I, I suppose. Is that right? You've had a lot of trouble. You're suffering severely now. Cancer. Is that true? If that's true, raise your hand. Well, a God who knew where the fish was had the corner in his mouth, doesn't he know what's wrong with you? The one who knew where the woman had so many husbands, wouldn't he know what was wrong with you? That his presence is near. Do you believe that? That's only to vindicate this one thing, that I'm telling the truth about the Bible. Now, he said in the Bible, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Is that true? Come here. Almighty God, in confirmation of thy word and the word of thy... Son, Christ Jesus, I lay hands upon this woman and say to this evil spirit, remove from her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Go believing now. Let me hear from you. Have faith. How do you do, sister? You believe? You believe me to be his servant? Look this way on me. You believe me to be his prophet? You do. Yeah, diabetes. Is that right? Of course, other things of a woman your age, you know what I'm talking about. The bathroom, you know, See, I can't say it before this audience. You see. That's right, isn't it? Nobody in the world knows that but God alone. Is that right? All right, come here. Lord God, why? I pray that your spirit will anoint this woman, Lord, with your blessings now. And may she go home and get well in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask this blessing. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go and believe with all your heart. You believe, sister, with all your heart? You believe me to be God's prophet? Are we strangers? We are. I know nothing about you. You're a very nervous person, aren't you? You have some kind of a, a feelings that comes over you. It makes you feel like sometimes you're just about to be upset, you know. That's menopause. But another thing, you're anemia. You're liking blood. Is that right? Calvary has a transfusion for you. You believe that? Come here. In the name of Jesus Christ, make you be healed and go home and get well. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go believe him. Have you believed? Now, God Almighty is here in his presence this year. You believe that? And every demon is subject to the Spirit of God now. 
Every power of Satan is subject to God's Spirit. There's been nothing can be hid from him. Amen. You can say of it what you want to, but God knows. Have faith. Be there anywhere in the name of the Lord Jesus. I challenge your faith. You believe that I've told you the truth that God sent his angel. And I'm only testifying what's truth and God's declaring. You have no right to disbelieve anymore. God is... Uh, any man can testify of anything. That's a man saying it. But when God comes down and proves it's the truth, then you must believe God. If you don't, worse things than this will come up on you. The Bible said, go and what no more? What is sin? Unbelief. Go and disbelieve no more or worse things. Is, it, is this little boy... Is, how do you do, honey boy? Here's something sweet, a little boy. Come here, sweetheart. Look up here at me. Why, you're a mighty fine little boy. I want to talk to you just a moment. Hold your little hand. I want you to look up here at Brother Brandon. Do you like to go to Sunday school? You do. You love Jesus? You do. Now, if Jesus was here in his body form tonight and standing here on the platform with a, a green-looking suit on if he lived in this day. He'd dress like other people. He didn't dress any different than anyone else. But did, if he was here, he'd know just what was wrong with you, wouldn't he? Is that right? And he'd tell you what was wrong with you and then he'd lay his hands up on you and you'd get well. Is that right? Now, you look up here, Brother Branham. I don't know you do, honey. Don't know you. This is your son? I thought there's some connection with you and that boy. This is your baby, your boy. Yes, sir. Mother, you look at me then as God's prophet. Do you believe me? You do. All right? The boy's suffering with a heart trouble. And that's rheumatic fever in the heart, which is absolutely hopeless outside of God. That's right. The bowels of his heart. Is that right? The doctor, a tall fellow, told you that. Is that true? If that's right, raise your hand. How do I see the doctor know? He's standing there by your side now in vision. Yes, sir. You believe that he'll get well? Say, Mother, you're suffering too, aren't you? You have some kind of spells of smothering in your chest. Is that right? Is that true? The baby has something wrong. A little girl. It's in her neck. Some kind of a little gland in her neck. Is that right? Is that true? Almighty God who sent your Son, Christ Jesus, bless this people, this little family tonight, and may they go home, may this little boy recover and live many happy years. May the mother recover, may the little girl recover, and may your Spirit come, Lord, and vindicate your service tonight and heal these people in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, my little boy. Go now, and the Lord bless you. Come here, I just want to lay hands on the baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be going, our mother, rejoice. Now here, what's making you choking is nervousness. You're very nervous. You're upset about those children. Settle it down. It's in God's hands now. They'll get well. Go on and don't doubt nothing. Just believe with all your heart. God bless you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same Lord Jesus. Nothing can stand in His path. He's the Emmanuel. He's raised from the dead. He's living among men. Have faith in God. Sure, He is always unpopular. He always will be until He's coming. And then the thing that condemned the world saved Noah. And the Holy Spirit that tonight if they're condemning will save the church. Amen. Have faith in God. All right, sir, you come. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. I've seen the Spirit of God stand over my sister here from my own church, Mrs. Roberson, just then. I do know what's wrong with her, but Sister Roberson, God bless you. How many has ever seen the picture of it in the pictures? I hear where the... Well, it's been all, all the, We've got it here. We'll have it in a few nights. The only supernatural being was ever photographed in all the world, scientifically proven. How many have seen the picture? Let's see your hands. Sure you have. 
in Washington, D.C. tonight. You're the patient, are you, sir? Are we strangers? I don't know you. Or you've just seen me then. You've been in a meeting and seen me. All right. So far then, we're strangers. Is that right? I'd be perfectly strange to you and you to me. But you are Christian. Yes, sir, you are Christian. I believe that with all my heart. Not only that, but you're a minister. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. You're a minister of the gospel. Yes, sir. And you're suffering with something up here in your head, sinus trouble. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. If that's right, raise your hand. Yes, sir. Well, brother, do you believe he's standing near you now to bless you? Yes, sir, oh, God, I pray that you bless this man. Heal him in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for his healing. Amen. God bless you, brother. Go on your road rejoicing. Have faith. How many we call? Ten or twelve? Ten? Let's try another five. What was... This could be a night that would... Why, how can you disbelieve? It's the only thing you'd have to shut your eyes and walk away and say, God, I believe you're a liar. The only thing would keep from believing would be a perfect infidel. Well, at least some of those very religious... I mean in the power of God that have to believe. Have faith. God will bring it to pass. All right, come, lady. You don't get over that cancer? Do you? Accept your healing from Christ and go home and say, Lord, I believe you right now. Let me hear from you in a couple of days, will you? You go get sick now in about 72 hours. Don't pay attention to that. Come on back at that and tell me how you're feeling. Come, lady. Do you believe? You want to get rid of that anemia condition? Say, I want blood from Calvary. And go get healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Believe with all your heart now. You can get a TV and get, go home and get well with that? Do you want to? Go home and say, Lord, I accept it now with all my heart. You can go and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Have faith in God. Do you believe? Now, the more you talk to people, of course, more it, it tells from getting weak. The whole thing's becoming like a whirl buzzing around. I know the little lady's had polio, haven't you, sister? I couldn't heal you, but you've had polio. You stand there praying, wasn't you? May God grant it to you, sister. You're suffering with a nervous break. Isn't that right, lady, laying on a cot? Isn't that true? A nervous break. Don't let the devil defeat you. If you have faith tonight, you can go home and be well. I can't heal you, but you can't hide yourself. It can't be hid nothing now. God is sure to reveal it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let your faith go to work out there. Believe. How do you do, sir? We're strangers, aren't we? I don't know you. You've had a very odd life, haven't you? See a dark streak moving behind you. I thought first you was a minister, but you, you wanted to be a minister. You tried to be. Isn't that right? But you put it off a little too long. Say you've had an accident, haven't you? An automobile accident. Isn't that right? And it's broke up your speech. You've got an impediment of speech. Isn't that right? And you've got something wrong. I see you trying to lay something. No, it's a memory. You can't remember things good. Is that right? You're supposed to be, you want to be a minister. Is that right? Well, God forgives you of that. Go now and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and go on preaching the gospel. God bless you now. God bless you. Have faith. A little lady sitting there with her hands up like this has been praying. You've been nervous, haven't you, sister? For a long time. When that lady a few moments ago was healed, you were healed at the same time. It's a mental nervousness. just keeping you upset. Is that right? A lady sitting there next to you, the cataract. She 
want to get over that for a long time. Haven't you, sister? Isn't that right? Didn't you, you had some kind of a bowel condition, this tumor. Is that right? Isn't that right? Because you had kidney trouble and upset. Is that true? If it is, raise up and accept your healing. Well, why don't you all believe God at this time? You can stand to your feet and accept Him then as your healer if you believe Him. Almighty God, the author of life, send your spirit and heal every person in here. In Jesus Christ's name, may the Holy Ghost right now cast out every evil, unclean spirit and make the people well through Jesus' name. The lady's up off the stretcher. She's raised up, taking her position off of the stretcher, going home well. Praise be to God. Let's give God praise, all you people.